result of the deconstructed bloom. So now I want to embellish or bloom embellish the deconstructed bloom. Get that? Yeah, Lance coined it. We're all just kind of going with it this week. As I looked at it, I thought, you know what? It looks like a an image of a woman and her cool like hair kind of coming out to the side. I already pre-sketched it out with like a big fat chunky graphite stick. I need to really get like pencils, but you know what? The cool thing though about graphite on an acrylic poured canvas is the fact that if this turns out like shit when you sketch it, you can actually just take an eraser and erase it and draw it all over again. Or keep drawing until you get it right or just erase it all together and go, you know what, I loved it before I touched it. I'm not sure what color to, so that she actually shows up on the canvas. So glad you're here. Let's get started with bloom embellishing. Oh, that's so hard to say. And uh, let's see kind of where that takes us. I have no clue where it's gonna lead, but I'm glad you're really here for the journey. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, learn, learn new skills, learn new things. I think my eyelashes are sticking together. I don't wear makeup a lot. I only put mascara on. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, bloom bellishing time. Let's start playing with my face. I see you watching me when we're with our friends. It's definitely something in the air. So let's take it from there, cause I know you want it. Afraid to let it show. And I know you need it Why don't we let it grow, grow, grow I think it's time we stop tipping on our toes What's holding you back now, sugar? Cause I don't know, I sure know you want it Afraid to let it show Since I've never done this before and I have no idea what I'm doing, I thought that I would come in at first with acrylics, uh, just paint and just paint the lines out to get more definition and I thought, oh, that was just too dark. So then I had the bright idea that I would come in with an acrylic marker and outline everything. But again, it's still too dark. It's crisper, but it's too dark. So it's really not working for me, so I'm actually going to wipe it all off. However, what I did note though, is when I wiped it off, that's when I got the look I wanted for the outline. It was like a much softer outline. So there's a tip, a nice little Tiffany tip. When you're outlining something on an acrylic pour and you just want like a soft outline and you don't want just the graphite pencil, then go in with like a acrylic marker and then just wipe it off because um, part of it's still gonna stay if you don't scrub too hard and it'll really soften up the image. And then when I started to blend, of course, because it's over an acrylic pour and the canvas is kind of almost like a plasticky feeling, um, it's kind of difficult to paint, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and this is just regular acrylic uh, paint right out of the tube. And I'm just kind of blending it with a sponge. I found that that worked really, really well. So there's tip number two, if you wanted to try this for yourself, kind of, you know, what I learned along the way. And I'll come back in with some more voiceovers if I feel that there's something else that needs it. A little bit more explanation. So let's take it from there. So let's take it from there. Why, why don't we let it grow, 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 grow?
You know, I found interesting about this was it kind of took a life on its own as it was developing. Um, really similar to like fluid art. You know, when you do fluid art, at, you know, I'm assuming you do because you watch my channel. You know, the paint kind of takes on a life of its own when you start to tilt the canvas or spin the canvas or just, you know, blow out the paints, whatever your method is. And this is kind of like the same thing. Like my initial intention was just to put on like the face and the neck. And then from there it was like kind of like, Meh, you know. So I went in with the palette knife and I started just to, you know, scrape with the palette knife to create some of the, uh, to create the dress. And then of course, now I'm going to come in and make the lips, which I, that was always part of the initial intention. Um, so, you know, I just, again, it just takes on a complete life of its own and I keep embellishing and just enjoying the process as I continue to create this little glamour woman. I don't know what else to call her. The glamour chick? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Interestingly enough, things you learn along the way. I don't want to be just a memory. Cause I don't want to be. And again, like I said, it just continued to take on a life all on its own. I thought that just having the black dress just kind of was flat and didn't really offer a whole lot of depth or interest. So then I went back in with some magenta, again with the palette knife, and just kind of added an extra layer to the dress to add a little bit of visual interest. But then after I did the dress, I realized, well, I was gonna actually try to paint an eye but then it was kind of awkward to be able to put that in because I'm like, well, is the pour over top of the eye or what is it? I wasn't sure. So I went back with the palette knife to kind of create like a flower over top of the eye instead, like kind of like it was a part of like the head piece. I don't know. And then of course the black looked like she had a black eye. So then I went over in the magenta to kind of make it look like it matched the dress. I, I really, I'm not a fashion designer. I really don't know what I'm talking about, but this is kind of, you know, what my thought process was. And then I went in with a couple of layers again to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. So it's black, the magenta, then black. And then I went back in with magenta over top and it really gave it because the magenta is like an iridescent against, it's not, ir not iridescent, it's translucent uh, compared to the black. So it kind of added, it kind of uh, varied in color for lack of a better word. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video and this is the type of stuff that you'd like to see more on the channel, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications um, and leave me a comment down below. And of course, if you've got any questions on the technique or what I did that you know maybe I didn't explain very well, more than happy to chat in the comments. Uh, and don't forget, tonight's a Friday night of premieres. So up after me is pouring together with Lance Travis, followed by Cindy at Cynthia Porter Studios. Then it's art by Donna M. 
and Nate Bright. So I hope you'll join us over there in the chat. Uh, link to all of their premieres and stuff is in my description below. So ciao for now and see you in the next video.